Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to February, February 1st, 2023. Wow, the month has flown by. <clears throat> so, I, you know, I'm not sure what stream number this is. If I look back at my notes, let's see, we started We started actually working on the composition for this tiger back on January 15th, I believe. Maybe January 16th. So that was day 18. Now we're up to day 32. Yeah, 32 today. And uh, I'm to a point now where I'm updating the Gumroad once a week. It's just a lot faster if I wait for, you know, five or six days to pile up and then update all the resources on the Gumroad channel. So that's actually good for me in a lot of ways. <laughs> um, but just as a reminder, as I start the stream here, uh, I want to remind you guys that if you enjoy this on my Gumroad, there's traditional to digital. And oops, I just clicked away from it. Uh, the last time I updated it, as you can see, it's growing. Look at all this stuff. We got 29 different days of resources on here. <clears throat> there's so much that I, I used to have small descriptions under each one, but now it's just like, holy cow, I'm just going to. I don't want this page to get 10 million miles long. So we have this here. There's also, I uploaded a new tutorial. You probably have seen my uh, preview video on it, but I've uploaded um, how to paint the eyes in oil for beginners. So if you're interested in that, that is there for $20. And actually you can use the same discount for both of them. So CB50 off will give you 50 off, 50% 50 off each one of these. So if you're interested in the resources for this live stream, or if you want to learn how to paint eyes in oil, yeah, I'll take you through the entire process. That is like 23 videos, seven hours of continuous instruction. I had a lot of fun with that one. Hopefully it helps a lot of people. That's what I'm, I'm hoping for. Okay, back to the tiger here. And we're going to work on these palm fronds. Actually, no, I didn't quite finish up the tree to the far right. So we're going to get some of that looking a little bit better than it is right now. Maybe fix this stick up here first, because that's still looking kind of wonky. I'm going to look at... There we go. That's We are on the correct layer, so that's good. Something you always have to kind of check for yourself. Are you on the right layer? Um, I know. I've constantly gone to the incorrect, to an incorrect layer all the time, so. And we're dealing with a lot of dark tones here. A lot of dark values. You know, maybe later I can... Um, lighten this up but for now for now we're going to keep it pretty dark the reason why is because we want to keep it pushed back as much as we can we don't want it to compete with the tiger everything is done to support our vision our idea our motive motivation our composition Yeah, one day here soon, I'm going to have to refresh my thoughts on the composition because we wrote down a bunch of notes and our idea is all about perseverance, never giving up and embodying this tiger mentality because a tiger is only successful when it's hunting about 
four percent of the time one in 14 i think something like that on average but the tiger never gives up and that's what i want to kind of show here this is what we're kind of you know it's very difficult showing emotions you know these kind of complex emotions or ideas in art and it's a challenge it's a it's a huge challenge to be able to do that it would be a lot easier for me to you know find an image of a tiger and paint it maybe make some small adjustments to it but we're trying to take things a bit further and Speaking of taking things further, the one thing I need is to get my reference up. Uh, I have a reference of a jungle, a Sumatran jungle. Okay. I'm very organized, but I, wor I'm, I work on so much all the time that I have to find it. Okay, here's my jungle reference. Yeah, there it is. This is what I'm kind of looking at. I'm actually looking at small pieces in there. So this, this stick, these kind of sticks coming off of this tree is one thing that I'm looking at. And the tree itself, to try and draw that as much as I can, or as best as I can. I'm really enjoying all this moss. Keeping it gray as well. Not only is it dark, but it's also gray. You know, it's a grayish green back here. Again, we, we want that orange of the tiger to pop out as much as possible. I'm gonna switch to a more scratchy brush like that one. Not that bright though. Because I see this kind of hanging moss that's happening right here. Let's move to this brush. Getting, you know, getting multiple different textures of brushes, especially when we're dealing with organic shapes is always good. And I, you know, honestly, I'm tending to use this pencil brush for just about everything. I like the texture that it has, the control that it has. I used it to draw up the tiger as well. Of course, I could probably, you know, spend some extra time and find a, a nice brush that is a rake brush, they call them. Um, those are brushes that, you know, do exactly what it says. Like if you drug a rake over the ground, like grass or something, or sand, it would make these kind of deep divots into it. There are lots of rake brushes out there. I bet you I could, if I, if I go to all brushes and then I choose and I search for rake. Yeah, these are rake brushes here. So this is actually going to be really huge. Like, and this is an RGB brush, so it actually looks like really thick paint. Let's try this one. Now we can throw some of that in there. Let's see what this one's like. This one's interesting. It's it does like here let me lighten it up a bit so you can see Okay, maybe lighter. Oh, it must, <clears throat> it must have some blending qualities to it. Or maybe it is just a blending brush because it's just pulling up what I already have down on this one. Oh, that's the same. Because it's not really like, even if I pick out this yellow color. It's not putting down any yellow color. It's really just blending stuff. Yeah, that's interesting. Good morning, Thinker. Glad you're here. 
we're still working on this tree. Shouldn't take too much more time because down here, as I look at you know, our reference image, it's just really dark, honestly. I'm pulling out really dark colors using a very textured brush. This is a brush that we created on the stream as well. I need to recreate my oil painting brushes, the brushes that look a bit more like oil paint have some real kind of oil painting texture to them. And I'm, you know what, I'm going to do a bit more searching for a very highly textured brush. This could be interesting. So this is looks like a pile of pencils together. I'm going to select maybe a lighter color. Oh, let's zoom in on that, see what it's creating. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Not exactly what I want. I want something with even more texture to it. These are all drawing brushes. Uh, these are all from David Ravoy. A lot of these are. This might have some good texture to it. Mm, it's more, it, it turns out to be more flat than anything. This actually has some nice texture to it. Yeah, that's really good. I like that one. Let's see what else we can get. And that most of these are all default brushes. The only other pack that I've downloaded has been the David Ravoy brushes. Um, everything like Krita involved, he's deep into, and you'll see kind of his hand into it. You could also go to krita-artist.org and there's a ton of brushes you can download there. Just the community creates all kinds of brushes and just puts them up there for free to download. Well, oh, that one's kind of crazy. This is one of the things that I really enjoy about, uh, look at this, a brush that already does cross hashing for you. Somewhat. <clears throat> I really enjoy the just experimentation with brushes. That would work if it was more vertical. See, there's a, there's, I think, for what I'm doing here, the, the more chalky brushes seem to work better. What do I mean by that is if you look at, I'll make this lighter so you can actually see it showing up in this dark background, but see how this has a lot of texture to it, but each individual piece of texture is pretty flat. Um, and that's because it's not, it's not working on top of a pattern. Usually you can texture your brushes really well by putting them on, on top of a pattern in some way. But if I go back to my favorite brushes and I pick out this uh, kind of pencil brush, you see how that has kind of a pattern going on with it? So there's a difference there. It would be nice if I had, you know, if I could, and I could probably do this, I could adjust the brush that I was just using and put a pattern behind it. Let's do that. And actually I lost it. It's way down here somewhere. It's this thing here, isn't it? Okay. So if I jump up here to, what is it called? It's called like edit brush settings. And you can see the, the brush tip that it's using right here. It's just six dots. It was very simple. So that's going to provide a lot of texture. But what we can do is scroll all the way down under texture, there's pattern. And we can turn that on and right away it already has a pattern selected. There. That really is kind of put it, what, what I was thinking about, you know, exactly in that pattern. You can test it over here on this side as well. Let's see. 
try a, diff a couple different patterns. Yeah, we, we want a pattern with as much texture as possible, but not snakeskin. <laughs> It's really hard to see there. Let's do it on what we're working on. No, not so good on that one. Actually, kind of the first one that I saw was pretty darn good. Or the first one that it, that it was on was really good. Now I have to find that one. Maybe I shouldn't have changed it. It's okay. It's easy to kind of go through here look at patterns I think it was this one yeah thinker says D did you consider the sky hole suggestion at the top between the two trees on the left right I'm a little dyslexic <laughs> uh yeah I looked at it briefly honestly and I I didn't think it really on, well, it did do something. It, it it added a little bit more distraction away from the tiger. So I still have it in the back of my head, honestly. But as it stands right now, we'll probably keep it without the hole in between the, the two trees. The one thing that we can do with this brush, these uh, when you choose these patterns, is when you go into option... Oh, it does have a random offset to it, which is good. Uh, what that does is sometimes you'll choose a pattern and if you want it to um, that pattern to move around every time you pull the brush up uh, it will make things look a bit you know have a bit more texture now i can back up here and i can first i'll pick out like a dark color and i'll put that around in places Going from dark to light on these as well is seems to is working is working well. I feel like that that should be honestly it should be darker than what I what I even have currently, but that is so close to it. What I can do is adjust the hue a bit. We pull it all the way over here into these kind of magenta colors. I bet you it'll look even darker. Oof, that's too magenta E. Let's just go all the way to gray. And then it would pull all the color out of it. And it still has a tiny bit of color into it. But yeah, that's kind of got the darkness, the dark area that I want. Get back to this brush, the one that we created. It It's a bit softer in some ways, so getting a variation of softness. And lots of texture. Uh, so I should have favorited that brush. It's okay. I kind of know where it's located. Yeah, really darkening this up right here. <clears throat> going a lot from the the reference image that I'm looking at I could be worrying too much about this area that should be kind of pushed back anyway and now that I picked out all that texture I really don't like it it's kind of adding in too much Let's lighten some of this up a bit. 
So this is going to help to separate that tree a bit, this foreground tree from the background tree, because as I'm looking at it, it has kind of a, the, this moss texture more on the the edge as it's turning to the light. Just really kind of having fun with this area right now. It's like just making abstract shapes, which is pretty darn easy to do. As long as when I pull back that it has this kind of idea that we're going for. Moss covered tree. I guess it's not more of an, it's not much of an idea. It's more of a, you know, just making it look like the reference, which I feel like now I want to start pulling out some of the color from our, our reference that we created. And we, we grade this reference out a bit as well. So you can see what I'm doing. This is the tree here. It's really dark and just on the edge, it has all of this. See what that color looks like that I just picked out. stream is buffering and I know why forgot to pause the syncing of the darn Googles I have to do that and then also on my phone I need to go on my phone and turn that into airplane mode because it'll, it'll start backing up images or something on my phone <laughs> sorry about that guys love technology but you know with it comes a lot of necessary knowledge. Down in this area, I'm just going to obliterate just about everything. There's going to be a dark area of texture. I see how black that gets. You know, staying away from those extremes, you know, really still gives us that. Um, extra push if we need like we haven't even gotten close to black if i put this black here look how different that that is so there's still a lot of extremes that we can get into in that background if we need um and that, that is so important you know compressing your values and compressing you know all the aspects of color down 
and I totally drew on my man I always do this so everything I just just did is on the layer with this image so I have to select all that area hit X Right, and then go back down here to the layer that I should be on, this one, and then paste above it, then control E to merge them together. I do that way too often. So let's let's go down here. I'm not gonna make it as dark as, you know, if I select this, I go straight to black. And I don't want that. I think this dark value that we have is close enough. I'm mean, just darkening up everything down here. But then, you know, I see these kind of stripes of of color, really like a gray. I could just pull it up to here. So I, it's kind of like you're looking at an abstract painting and you're trying to copy an abstract painting. Which is, when you think about it, would be super hard, right? Because when you have a, you know, a painting of, you know, a person, you know, a noun, a person, place or thing, right? I, you can kind of understand it more. But when you're looking at nature, it's like trying to copy an abstract painting sometimes. So there's not much structure, not many things that you can describe that you can grab onto easy. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. It's got some nice variation to it. One thing I, I, I think I can improve is if I get this light color. Now, I like this piece of hanging moss here. A little bit lighter. This might be too light. I'm dealing with such subtle values here that it's very easy to go too far. So the artistic color picker is not really working that well for that because it gives me these different definite value areas. And the jumps are too large. You see how this just looks like a lot of scribbles, but when we back out on it, you know, it has that kind of textural look that I was going for. Okay, so I like the way that looks. We're going to stick with that. Next thing is going to be these palms. So I got my background. Palm one is this big guy here. Then we have this uh, kind of overlay layer that we created. I'm going to create one more layer on top of that. And what I'll do for a reference, so I'll make it easier on myself, is I'm going to flip it. So you can go layer, transform, flip horizontally. And I'm really going to be looking at this palm frond here. That's actually the one that we pulled it from. There's a few things on it that we can do right away. 
that's going to make this look a lot like what it should. And I might... Hmm. You know, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to our tiger palette. And I'm going to select some of these really dark colors. So that's not quite black. It's a really dark green. It's just really dark. As you can see, there's some shadow palm fronds leaves back here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill them in. But I'm not sure if it's dark enough. We're going to have to hit that other level, I bet. Yeah, it doesn't stand off as much. Okay, so let's do this. Go a little bit darker. Not all the way to black, and then I'm going to select that one. So I can throw this background one in. Maybe another one. Yeah, so that's all background. And now we'll cover it up. Let's pull out some colors in here. What do we got? It's a very cool green. Cool as in closer to blue. But <clears throat> now I'm getting some inter interference from my drawing. And I don't think we need it on the palm, so I'm just going to turn it off. I cannot bring that opacity all the way up. Let me do this. Yeah, it's this opacity up here. breathe a little bit more life into those colors. So what I'll do is I'm going to creep over here closer to our warmer green. And then I can select this value, which is a cooler green, and then move that to closer to yellow. I think the reason why I feel like I need that is because I'm putting it up against, you know, this kind of background layer, which has that kind of very bright green to it. But we don't want that e anyways, because it's just it's so different. It's very cartoony comparatively. So let, let's do this. Let's maybe select. No, that's way too light for the first couple layers. Let's do this. Let's. That's too warm. Let's cool it off some. Not there yet. Looking for a nice kind of under layer that I can go at within this. Oops. going to work more from dark to light as well. So 
So that's looking pretty good. What I'm going to do is lock the No, see, that's not really going to work there, is it? Let's lock the transparency on the, the layer below. And then I'm just going to do an overlay of this color that I chose. I pulled down one of those darn rules. I could always turn off my rulers. So if you go to view and then uncheck show rulers. Now I don't have rulers anymore. I don't have to worry about that. I'm trying to keep the texture within this brush. I'm going to hit W so that I pass it. I bring that opacity back so you can build it up and keep the texture. Let's go ahead and do that for palm two as well. Bring that back into color and value that we want to start with, because right now it's too garish, honestly. I can even even push back palm three as well. Let's do do all three of them. I'm flattening these out. Yeah, that's fine, but it'll help me get a better understanding of, you know, where, where the composition is going as well. We may find that once we get into painting the tiger, that we can lighten up uh, everything in the background. All right, back to palm one. And then bring up my reference again so we got that kind of un underneath green color going So I like how these palm fronds have kind of a turn to them. You know, they're turning away from the light. So this could be really light. Yes, that is. We want to get that kind of turn in there. Gonna work it up a little bit gradually on, a, on at least a few of these. And then once I feel like I got a color coloration that I like, I'll repeat it. And I'm not locking the transparency on this because the, these edges are just too sharp. Um, I, I don't want those edges as sharp as a selection. Now I could, I could have feathered the selection. So when you make selections, you can change it so it kind of blurs on the edge a bit, but it looks it doesn't look um, very authentic, honestly. So I'll, I'll do this and I'll get kind of an overall idea of how that's looking. Yeah, the more I look at these palm fronds, the more kind of fake they look, honestly. Hmm. 
<clears throat> I need to breathe some reality into this and figure out what I'm missing. Kind of improvising a, li a little on here as well. What I need is a green that's darker than this. That works really well. Yeah, definitely. So the values seem to be lighter towards the stem. Light fades a bit as it gets to the tip. Yeah, there's definitely a curve here. We can do this one. We could start really light at the top. And then as we're curving down, we get into some blending. So I could, I could keep with that actual color. And then I could go to something like this artistic color picker or <clears throat> I forget which one. This one changes the value, just takes the same hue and adjusts the value, adjust the value on it alone and just pull that down a bit as we work it down into the tip. But I don't think it would go that dark, honestly. I'm keeping everything. I'm keeping these a little bit lighter than what I'm seeing on the palm fronds. But maybe I shouldn't. Maybe, maybe it's cool that it blends into the background a bit as well. definite value changes on the, on these I'm trying to keep with a brush that's a bit larger than what I'm comfortable with and work within that because not only do I want to add some texture to the edges of these palm fronds because it's way too sharp, but I don't want to get caught up into just the super minute details, which, you know, I may already be doing here, but this is one of those major players within the the composition.
One of the best ways that you can blend, well, first you, you have a brush that has some opacity or flow variation to it. And then as you go over different values or colored areas and adjust that value slightly or that color slightly, then you can pick out what you just adjusted or an even more subtle kind of transition. If that makes sense. So if I'm right here, and let's say I wanna adjust this value and I go over it just a little bit. Well, I've made kind of a lighter value there and I can select that for an even more subtle kind of transition further in. Maybe go back to this white or this, this lighter color. Just kind of picking as you go, picking the color as you go to make those transitions a bit easier. And then I'll, I'll pull out some of this very light color. There, I mean, it's not so uniform. There's places on these palm fronds where the light color is just picked up really sharply. Okay, let's hide our reference and then back up and see what we got. It's looking better, a lot less fake, a lot less cartoony. Yeah, I'm gonna continue with it. Again, the, the idea that we're moving forward with on here, as slow as it seems, is to eventually work this up into an oil painting, which will also be on the live stream. That's gonna be fun to set up every morning. And I do mean fun. I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. It's kind of fun to figure that out for me. I, I'm one of those weird people that like figuring out stuff that way. <laughs> Yesterday I recorded five short videos for I'm doing these like three minute Thursdays. And I was like, eh, let's try a different setup. And the setup looked pretty good, but then I recorded it with you know, the wrong ISO on my camera and made me look like a ghost. So I had to do a lot of post coloration editing. The technical term. <laughs> what do they call that? Um, color grading, that's what they call it. Not sure why they call it color, color grading within filmmaking, but I had to do a lot of that. I do like that this palm frond is a bit warmer than the background. It kind of sets it off from the background just a ton, just a bit.
Okay, that's not too bad, but we lost that kind of striking separation uh, that really composed this image. So here's what we're going to do. We're not going to draw it all over again. I mean, we're in digital, right? What I can do here is take all three of these layers, okay? And then I'm just going to hit Control J, and that's going to duplicate them. So I can hide my originals. And then I can group those three. So it's one big frond, right? And then I'm going to do Control U on this. And I'm zoomed out really far so that I can see how this affects things. And actually, instead of a Control U, I'm going to do a Control L for levels. Because you have more control within the values this way. We're going to try and lighten everything up. And see what it looks like. Let's create a filter mask on that and then control U for some color adjustments. You kind of have to wait on this. Like you make an adjustment and you wait. And I, I'm not seeing that hue change at all. Oh, because I'm on the levels. I need to go back up to the layer, control U. There you go. to make it a little bit warmer. Saturate it just a little bit more and then lighten the whole thing up again here. Yeah, when I lighten it up, it needs more saturation, needs more color to it. Yeah, that's kind of killing the whole thing. It's just not working well. I don't like it. just make it larger. So what I was saying before, and I don't feel like I finished that statement well, but these are the kind of things that you want to figure out in digital because if you, if I was in an oil painting and the, this palm front was just not working well at all, um, I, you know, it's very difficult. To make these kind of changes that I'm making within an oil painting. Now bringing it a lot closer, I think worked well. levels off yeah I don't like the levels I feel like we have to change it manually honestly I do like that it's larger though so let's do this let's um hmm I'm going to create a new layer, put the alpha transparency on it, and make sure that that works. 
Can't really tell. I need to pick a really bright color. Yeah. Now I'll have the transparency on that. And then I'm going to get this kind of extra brush that we created. And I'm going to warm this up a lot more. Maybe more than it should be. Not that one. That's more of a yellow, not a green. So lighten it up and warm it up. Maybe add some intensity to it. Very subtle, you know, going with the, the form as much as I can. What do you guys think? Let's look at the comparative. I'll group this this section. Turn it on. And then I'll group the new one. So this is the one we had before. And I think it, you know, it really lost that dynamic kind of let me zoom in for you. It lost that dynamic stripe through the tiger that was separating the tiger's head and keeping um, us into that top composition, this top area. But then I made it larger. The bottom piece down here is really important. As soon as I, because I need to bring that back. Actually, if I have them both together, it kind of demonstrates that just as just as well. So there it is with the big one. Oops. Without the big one. With, without. Yeah, I think the larger front works really well, honestly. I think I'm gonna keep them both on, to tell you the truth. Maybe I can move this one around just a bit. That adds like a little bit of interest back there. Like some extra fronds that are just kind of poking through in some places. We could even change the opacity down just a little bit. A lot less cartoony. I feel it needs a suggestion of wetness. Very light along the top of the leaves, pointing, pointing of the tiger. Yeah, I could see that. Let's do that before we end the stream for the day. I'm gonna stay zoomed out this far. And then I'm going to go to our alpha transparency layer. And then I'm gonna pick out Oh, that's really light. That's like, <laughs> let's, let's pick up what we have. Okay, there's where we're at. We have so much room to, to work into. So I'm gonna pull it down a little bit more saturated and lighter at the same time. 
using that pencil brush that I like a lot. And let's pop in some of those highlights. And, and on the edges of some of these, we can keep it sharp. And then on others, it's kind of like a blended light. And not on every single one. And that's, that's too intense, honestly. Backing it all up. I need to go closer to gray. So keep it that light, but closer to gray. Actually, out here on the edges, I'm going to darken it up intentionally. Like it's being hit by a shadow out here. I don't want to leave, you know, I want to kind of vignette it a bit. Not that much. I don't want to, I didn't want to bring it in that much. Just right on the edge. And then I can bring a little bit of that lightness back. I'm getting kind of lost in this area of it though. Not sure what's happening. So let's, let's bring some structure back into it. that these couple fronds up so that I can actually see them. And then I'll darken it down again. Maybe that was too much. Let me bring it back a more bluish color. Whoa.
Sorry, really kind of focusing on this. I mean, I added some lightness to it, but then I kind of added it everywhere and destroyed its idea. still have a lot of room to go within these values. I keep adding it in too many places. And in places that aren't describing the form well at all. stream time but I think we've made some really good progress on what needs to happen with those palm fronds they need to be larger even that secondary one uh, behind there needs to be a lot larger as well um, palm two and I can do that pretty easily before I stop oh are you oh that one's locked no it's just that transparency is locked I should be able to transform both at the same time. Really? You can't transform both at the same time? That's okay. Oops. Let's just merge them. And by the way, I haven't really got into a lot of the differences that you can do with transform. There's all these tools down here you can use. This one is like a warp transform. So I can switch to that and select, you know, these little corners to really warp it out if I want to, you know, make some kind of interesting changes to it. Yeah, I always, I always go way too long on these things. Okay, there we are. We made some good progress. Uh, the, the far background is done. Uh, next stream, we're gonna continue on with these palm fronds and get those figured out. Hopefully in the next stream, we can get them all figured out. Uh, I feel like as soon as we establish kind of a coloration, which I, I feel like I'm gonna live with this for a day, right? And come back to it with fresh eyes tomorrow. Um, and maybe that palm frond is gonna be, you know, it's gonna look great. Or maybe as soon as I look at it again, I'll understand that I need to change something right away. But 
um, you know, the one thing I will say is if I zoom far back, it does have that kind of striping effect that that we are that I really want to keep from our original composition. Um, and yeah. They're kind of striking, you know, it's an action in there. Okay. That's all for me, guys. And uh, same time tomorrow with the stream. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for joining me.